To be or to do, that is the question. The first part refers to spirit, the self. The second part sees you as flesh, as a body. And as a body driven by the desire to get something from the world, right? Namely pleasure and then more pleasure, and then better, and rearrange the situation and fix stuff to make it all better so that you can have more pleasure, more and better, right? And how long does this pleasure last? Just a little while until it disappoints you and then you need to seek for something else and occupy yourself with something else and do something to get more pleasure or to get a new pleasure, or to make things better. So this keeps you in the game of doing and getting something from the world. What happens in the first option, right? To be or to do, what happens in being? Well, the truth about you, and I'm not talking about you as a separate self, I'm talking about the you that is me, the one that we are, just is, you are. I am. But in that beingness, if you allow yourself to be still and quiet and calm and know in your one heart that contains everything, everything is within your heart. There's only one heart. Everyone is within your heart. Know there and feel the love that you are. In that love and in the knowing that you are absolutely unconditionally loved just as you are as spirit as the beingness as the i amness that you are totally loved as the timeless formless being that you are there's no past anymore there's no burden there's no sin there's no regrets there's no pain There are no needs. There is no lack. In that stillness, if you give it a moment, if you choose to be rather than to do, right? To do is to get. To get something from the world. And while you can get pleasure from the world, That's really asking for too little. Why do you settle for a fleeting experience of pleasure, which will sooner or later turn back into pain again, or searching for happiness in the world, which might be there for a fleeting moment and turn into misery again? Why do we settle for so little when the kingdom of heaven is ours? So in doing, you'll get something in being you'll get everything. In being, not only will you have everything, or just recognize that that's always been the case, that you've always had everything, but you also are everything. When I'm speaking of everything here right now, I'm not speaking of everything as in things. I'm not talking about this idea of the nothing appearing as everything. Stars, planets, plants, trees, people, beds, couches, living rooms, cutlery, etc. Who cares about being all those things? It's cool, maybe, that you can experience being a thing, but sooner or later, being a thing is clearly seen to be limited. It's limiting yourself. It's confining yourself to be a person, to be a personality, to be a body, Even if you make that personality special and adored and receiving all kinds of attention and likes and follows and this and that and the other, will that make you happy? 
or projecting the specialness outside of you and seeing other people as better, as excelling, as above, as something to admire. Whereas others are lower and below, right? Nothing to admire there. So we create that illusion of differences. That's all in the realm of perception, the realm of doing. You always get a part. Parts you like, parts you don't like. Parts that give you alleged happiness, parts that give you alleged misery. In being, just being, still, calm, calm, quiet, not needing to do anything, you realize that you have and are everything. That's absolute safety. That's absolute completeness. That's absolute, meaning not changing, not going away. It's always there, that safety, that freedom, that joy, that calmness, that peace that is so beyond this world, right? And what do you need to do to experience that? Just be still and know that I am God. Know you're God. There's either the world or there's God. Where do you put your attention? And it's only a matter of realizing that one will forever fail you because it'll always give you something, not everything. The other gives you everything. And ultimately, even this choice is an illusory choice because only one is real. The world isn't real. All things that come and go, all things that pass are not real. All things that seem different from one another that seem divisible, right? Things. There's no happiness in things, so we're always pointing to the formless, the no thing. But that no thing is not nothing. Yes, the everything in terms of form is projected from that no thing, but that no thing really is the one self that is one with God. And what God is, is that absolute safety, that absolute love, that absolute quietness, that absolute, in that, in that quietness, in that stillness, there is the recognition, I have and am everything. There's no lack, there are no needs. Until you come back into doing, and you're a body again, and as a body you want to go and attain something and have pleasure, right? And that's okay. You're free to do that. You're so free. You can do that for as long as you want. All I'm saying here is that you're settling for too little. Why settle for something when you are and have everything? God didn't create you limited. Yeah, that's your own projection of being a limited separate self and wanting experience after experience after experience and maybe the next experience will give it to me and maybe the next experience will give it to me. And and so how do we go from all this doing and getting? I need, I need addiction to form. Give me something from the world. How do we go from that to just being? It happens naturally, organically, if you will, when you realize that the realm of doing is forever incomplete. There's always more to get. There's always more to do. There's always, I'm going to fix another little thing. I'm going to rearrange form in another way to make it somehow more pleasurable or better for me. It's always more and better, isn't it? More and better, more and better. And so once you see that this, this there's no actual end to this, it's never going to be enough. There's never a satisfactory, like a thing, a moment where you go, oh, okay, that's it. I've reached the satisfaction. It's just the, mo the, the, the more you see that this will not give it to you, the more you're willing to go back into God and realize that everything you're looking for is in God. And the you that rests in God is not the separate you. It's the one self. Everybody rests with you, so to speak, there. Because that's where everybody really is. The, the one self is not in the world. It's projecting the world. 
but it rests in God forever, 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 meaning timelessly. It's completeness, it's wholeness, and that's happiness, that's joy. There's no lack, there are no needs, there's no body. There's no personality in that wholeness, in that stillness, in that resting in God, in that absolute safety that is utterly unthreatenable. Everyone, so to speak, everything is there with you as one. It's all one self united with God as one. We are always together. We're never apart. We're really one. There's no distance between us. And you can feel that in your heart. There's no loss. We can't lose anyone or anything. Right? So when we're talking about this formless, timeless beingness, you could call it no thing, but be aware that this no thing is not nothing. When I say that you already have everything and are everything, that everything is content, not form. It is your beingness is everything. That's everything. That, that's love. To truly be boundless is to be formless. And that's what you always are. Being has no boundaries, has no edges. Love, which is what you are, cannot be contained. So the, the, the experience of being is actually not a static experience. It's actually, there's dynamism to it. There's movement to it in the sense that this completeness is uncontainable. So it's... It, it's as though it's it's as though it's vibrates. It's a it's alive, right? It's not just a static. I am just am, you know. And you want to go to sleep with that? I don't know, just am. No, there's there's beautiful quietness and silence and calmness and stillness in it. But it's not sleepy. <laughs> it's joyous. It's everything. It's everything. I'm talking about that which has never been limited, cannot be limited. I'm talking about that which was before form and that will be long after form. And that's your very being. You just are. So to be or to do. To do will give you something. To be gives you everything. Or it allows you to, in that stillness, recognize that you are everything in terms of content, not form. You are the safety you seek. You are the love you seek. You are the peace that you seek because that is your nature. You were created as love, as peace, as wholeness. You can't change that any more than the radiation of light itself can suddenly decide that it's darkness. The radiation of light is still light. It's the extension of the light we are the extension of what we call God. That's what we're one with. One with meaning there is no real distinction anywhere. And the only distinction is really made to say that you can't change your source. It's like there's a, there's a, there's a waterfall and it's like the water at the bottom says, oh, I was a water at the top, but now I'm something else. No. You are water. You are what you are. You can't change that. So this desire to get, this drive to get, is all body-related, and it's usually a drive to get pleasure, isn't it, from the world. So we do, 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 to get. right? To get the more, to get the better, to get the pleasure, which will then come back around and turn back into pain or to get the fleeting happiness that comes back around and disappoints us because it didn't last, or it ends in a sense of loss, or just misery. Yeah. So uh, you're free to do, to choose doing over being as much as you want. There's no sin. You're still whole and complete no matter what you imagine yourself to be. You're still light, even if you imagine yourself to be darkness. You're still water, 
even if you've imagined yourself to become something else. So it's just a matter of sitting for a moment and contemplating how much is all this doing making me happy? And when will I do enough to feel enough? And I tell you that as long as you perceive yourself as a body who needs to go out and do things to get things, even, even if those things are validation and approval and not actual physical things that will give you pleasure, the things that might give you mental, emotional pleasure, whatever. As long as you need to do something to get something from this world, it will always be incomplete. It will never fully satisfy. And so don't just believe me. Just examine it for yourself. How much doing does it take to actually be complete? And the answer is there is no amount of doing. But then have you given a fair shot to being? Have you sat in stillness long enough to really know your God, so to speak, to be still and know your God, know your source, know your true self, know your absolute safety. That's the only thing, if you sit in quietness, that you can actually be certain of. In the world, when you try to understand who you are, all of the answers that the ego gives you because it defines you in worldly ways, it defines you in bodily ways, it defines you according to the past, according to achievements, failure, success, innocent, guilty, good, bad, enough, not enough, it never really lets you feel that you're enough, not in a lasting way. All the ways that the ego defines you, they're all false. They're all body-oriented. They're all personality-oriented. So why not give being a, a chance and sit in that stillness and see if there isn't a voice that whispers to you that you can rest, rest in God, rest in love. Realize that you don't need to do anything. And in that will come the realization that you have no needs, you have no lack. You already have and are everything. Right? So in doing, you can get something from the world. In being, you realize that you already have and are everything. And so even when you're not just, you know, resting and being in a meditation, so to speak, but when you open your eyes and go into the world of doing, right, which you need to do nothing, you have nothing to accomplish, you have nothing to prove, you have nothing to get from this world. So even when you go into doing, you can remember, you can devote your mind, commit your decision to God, to, to the remembering, to the knowing of your sa safety, absolute safety to the knowing that you lack nothing, that truly you need nothing. And what then happens with the body is, since it has, it's no longer the means you use to get stuff from the world, pleasure, 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 right? Which always comes back to pain, never fully satisfies, fleeting, always about the body, the pleasure. The joy that I'm talking about, the safety that I'm talking about is the beingness, has nothing to do with the body, yeah? It was there before the body, it will be long after the body, it's timeless, formless. So even when you're with your eyes open, seemingly functioning in the world, your mind can either sort of give its allegiance to getting or to being. And in being, when you're in that safety, then the world stops being threatening because this doesn't look real anymore. That's what's real. That's what's solid. That's what's ever present. This is just passing stuff, right? And as you rest in that, there, there is the, uh, the space in you, the calmness in you, 
the quietness in you to afford to be more giving than getting. So in other words, what I'm saying is since you're not using the body to get pleasure, the body becomes a vehicle of service, if you will. The body becomes a loudspeaker, if you will, to, to remind the oneself of the truth of its nature, which is God. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily go around speaking or shouting it from the rooftops. It just means that it's in the it's what, however spirit wishes to use it, then it can be used in whatever way that is. Whatever your worldly talents seem to be will start to be in service of the spirit, of the self, rather than in service of the ego and getting, the drive to get, the endless drive to get, which is never enough. It's never satisfied. Yeah, so you don't live for your bodily pleasure. You don't live for your body. You live in God. You rest in God. And then the body is free to be used in whatever way the spirit guides it, which is in the best interest of the oneself, of all, right? So, to be or to do, that is the question. And it's a question that I encourage you to sit with for a bit and see, see what doing gives you and see what I need do nothing. I just am. I just be. Not I as a separate self, but as the wholeness. Formless wholeness, timeless wholeness. I be as that and give it a moment and see what happens in that stillness. And what the ego is doing all day long every day is it's defining you in worldly terms. It's defining you according to your relationships, according to your job, your successes, your failures, your past. None of that. Your source doesn't know anything about that. The, the true self doesn't know anything about who you think you are. It knows who you really are. So my thoughts about myself don't really mean anything. My thoughts about others don't really mean anything. See, that's A Course in Miracles says, I am as God created me. And there will be a lot of resistance to, to that, maybe even resistance to the word God and all of that, but just replace it with love. Love created me like itself. That's what I am. I cannot change my nature any more than the, ex the radiance of light can decide that it's darkness. The radiance of light is light. It's still light. So if our source is love and we are love, love is all there is. But you can only discover that in the stillness, in beingness, in calmness, where a quiet voice, so to speak, whispers to you. You have everything and you will experience the relief and the joy of not having any needs being totally complete and whole and that's the joy that's what that's what we seek for and all i'm saying here is doing cannot lead you to being only seeing that all this doing doesn't lead to the happiness you seek and the safety you seek, the unthreatenable nature of yourself, that utter certainty. The ego can't be certain. It has no ability to be certain. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't know who you are. It keeps trying to tell you who you are. I'm this person. I'm that person. I'm good. I'm, I'm innocent. I'm guilty. I'm bad. I'm successful. I'm a failure. Blah, blah, blah. All these things. Yeah. To be or to do.